Hello and welcome to The Big Picture. The death of the PhD scholar from the University of Hyderabad, Rohit Vemula, three days back, and the storm it has raised all over, has sparked off many questions and concerns about issues concerning our education system. The chain of events leading to the suicide of Rohit and the involvement of top ministers in the government, as well as the Union, Hu Union Human Resources Development Ministry, have raised issues concerning autonomy and dissent. Questions about whether Indian universities are increasingly becoming centers of job creation and less of acquiring knowledge and wisdom and new ideas are being raised. The role of students in discussing issues of national interest and the way the diversity of thoughts on these issues are allowed to be vented in the campuses have also come into question. We will discuss today whether autonomy and dissent, two of the most important pillars to ensure spread of knowledge, are increasingly becoming a casualty in Indian universities. To discuss this, I have with me Professor Sukhdev Turat, Chairman, Indian Council of Social Science Research and former Chairman of the UGC, Professor Mridullah Mukherjee, historian at the Center for Historical Studies, JNU, Monu Nalpat, a political analyst, Nilab Mishra, senior journalist and former editor, Hindi Outlook, and on the phone line is Dr. Sanjay Paswan, National Executive Member of the BJP. Welcome to all of you. Uh, Professor Turat, Professor Thorat, how disturbing are these developments yeah. which, have, which have been happening? You know, these are, this is apart from the issue of the suicide of Rohit and the kind of storm it has raised. How does it, what does it portend to the entire education, university education system as such? No, I am concerned with more with the suicide, which uh, you, are say, you are saying that... Uh, that's also an issue, but I think in my view, that's an important issue. Uh, why is it that the student has committed suicide uh, in 2016? In similar fashion, in 2008, another student has committed suicide. And from 2007 to 2013, these two suicides were in uh, Central University of Hyderabad, and there were seven suicides in, in a row in a period of 12 months in 2013. So nine suicide and and majority of them were, were Dalit, and a report was uh, uh, published in the Times of India in two, 2013, and the Andhra Pradesh High Court took a sue motive notice of that and direct the university to take a necessary step to stop it. So I think the key issue in my view is that the causes and the situation which led to this uh, uh, suicide of nine students and and of course the most most recent is in 2016. That need to be addressed. And, uh, and it is very important, uh, Nigam, I must share with you that after this uh, uh, seven suicide in a period of one year in 2013, the 30 ac academician of the several universities in Hyderabad had given a statement to the High Court and recommended that many of these universities should take necessary steps. And some of these universities haven't taken any step, including the Central University of Hyderabad. I think the key issue is, in my view, is that the problem of uh, the reason that lead to this kind of a situation need to be addressed. And uh, that, is, that is the key issue, and that issue is still there. Okay. So we are up against the uh, issue, and uh, several decisions are necessary. Okay. Uh, Dr. Sanjay Paswan, yeah. would you agree with uh, uh, Dr. Thorat that, you know, these, these several steps had to be taken, and also this... He is talking about 13 deaths in this university in the last uh, nine deaths in, in, in the last several years. And, you know, most of them are Dalit students. So, you know, the point which he probably is trying to make is that there is, there is, there is this discrimination against the Dalit students. Is that the way you would like to look at it? Dr. Paswan? Okay, we'll come back to him. I think we have lost him on the line. Uh, Professor Mukherjee, would you like to, would you, would you see it that way? That you know, is this, is this problem not just of Hyderabad University? Is this a, is this an endemic problem all over, in, 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 as far as universities are concerned, about this discrimination against Dalit? Is that the issue, major no, issue? No, I would say that the issue is, I don't, I wouldn't say it's the issue of discrimination. I think, as Professor Thorat is pointing out. The issue is what are the institutional structures and mechanisms that we have to handle situations right. when uh, clearly students from backgrounds that are very disadvantaged 
uh, either on a caste basis or sometimes on an economic basis or other basis also they come. What are the safety nets that we have when somebody is in a crisis? What automatic uh, institutional mechanisms kick in? Now, let's take this example where suppose even for uh, that there was a legitimate uh, ground for somebody taking action. I'm not saying in this case. But even if that be so, surely there must simultaneously in an institution be a way of handling the crisis from the point of view of the students. You rusticate students, you suspend students, you know they are poor students. They have nowhere to go. They are not coming from well-to-do families where they have financial and other uh, support that they can rely on. So this is again as, a, as an institution, a university is like a family. It has to think about all these issues. It cannot just, even if there was some real reason, which I think in this case grossly over, uh, there was a gross overreaction, obviously under external pressure. I think this is another thing that I would like to bring into the picture because coming from a university, we face this quite often. External, you know, some when, group when you're of talking of external pressure, which extern, it, from ministries, from for ministry, example. So it, see, it, it's very common it for student the, wings. It hits at the autonomy of the university. See, it's not just autonomy. Student wings of political parties who may be in power get activated and push their point of view with the minister or ministries and the ministries just take their memoranda or whatever represented they put and pass it straight on to the universities. Now you may say that we are just doing it in a ritual kind of way but you know jolly well that that exercise is a tremendous pressure on the university. Right. When those things are passed down the line and they for example reach to us in the department obviously we are, we are forced to react and we are forced to take cognizance of it because it has come from some high up because we will be told we have to reply to this. So you give us a reply. So to say very innocently that these things were just passed down the line and did not amount to any pressure, I think is pleading an innocence which we cannot really buy into. Okay. I think we have Dr. Sanjay Paswan on the line. Uh, Dr. Paswan, Dr. Paswan, do you see this trend, what, is hap what has happened in, in, the, in, in the university in Hyderabad? Is this some kind of a trend which you see across the country or is this... Is this the failure of the university administration to handle an issue which should have been handled at their level? Dr. Paswan? Okay, I think we can... Uh, Nalpat, Mr. Nalpat, would you like... Would you look at it that way? That is this something which should have been handled at that level? Was it allowed to, you know, escalate beyond, beyond the universities? And, you know, this is increasingly, we are seeing it happening. In a, we had the incident of the IIT in Chennai, where a center for, you know, Ambedkar Studies yeah. Center was, was, you know, was... The political uh, element so to it. Yeah. How do you see this? You know, Girish, I'd like to say that a university is a laboratory which basically grooms and empowers young people to do better in life and to do, you know, to have the right standard of ethics, morality, uh, intellectual prowess, etc. Now, here you have five students who come from extremely economically weak uh, backgrounds. Four of them, I understand, are, were children of agricultural laborers. I mean, these people have beaten un terrible odds to reach the university. These are not families which would easily be able to send a child to a university. You've got middle and class all, families. And they're all PhD scholars. Well, they're all PhD scholars. They've reached that level. And, you know, this is, it's a different matter. An upper middle class family or an upper class family is a very simple matter. But for these families, it would have been so difficult. And once they're in the university, you have to give them every chance to succeed because they have come up against such odds. Now, I would like to say very clearly, this vice chancellor, whoever he may be, he has done something which is completely inexcusable. He has snuffed out the futures of five children. He has snuffed it out completely. Now, this young man who took this unfortunate step, he was facing a completely black future. He had no future at all. He would probably have been working for 10, 15 more years, steadily, working hard, and to, to reach where he has reached. No, and you're, suddenly you're, you're he blaming, no, a no, black hole where his future should have been. You are blaming the university vice chancellor. I would say that the university but vice about, chancellor about, what, about, what, what about the higher-ups? What about the minister? How, no, they're, they're in, they, they, you know, do you think that their interference was necessary in this kind of You know, situation? Girish, I'd like to say very clearly, I've heard the explanation of the ministry. It was a routine passing of a letter. Now, this right. is absurd. You are supposed to be there as an official or as a ministry. 
to exercise your mind and judgment That's on right. issues. You're not there to just blindly pass, pass on. Absolutely. I mean, you can have, uh, let, let's and say... Not just once, there were four no. letters which, which I were I mean, you, hundreds of millions of people mm -hmm. then can become mm -hmm. officials of the ministry. Their mm -hmm. only job is to pass, pass on. on. Now, if you're saying that there's no application of mind, what you're saying is any letter that comes from MHRD, mm -hmm. throw in the waste paper basket, because none of us have applied our mind to it. Mm -hmm. We're simply passing it on. This is a ridiculous argument, which frankly insults even the MHRD. Okay. I think, uh, Dr. Paswan, can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, Dr. Dr. Paswan, can you hear me? Yes, yes. I okay. Heard. Okay. You know, do you, see what has happened in Hyderabad. Is this something, is this something of a trend which you, which you think is happening all over? Or is this something which has happened only in Hyderabad and, you know, it's a one-off case which, which cannot be generalized? You see, Hyderabad happens to be the most enlightened lot of Dalits. Hyderabad is having. Right. Whether, whether bureaucracy is there, students are there, or any, they, Hyderabad are the most enlightened. I, let me say very clearly. And uh, this, this, this incident can't be generalized. But uh, this is very much rampant in the university, especially in higher education centers. Since, uh, uh, since la last 10 years, so it's a very serious concern for every, you know, every government, every research organization, etc. So I, 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 I am telling you, whatever he has not accused anyone, it's okay. But he has so many, he has told so many things. But what his narrative is saying, it is revealing like anything. So at least uh, I, I told, uh, I have also, I am requesting the state government of Telangana also, University of Hyderabad also, and the government of uh, India, Charity Ministry also, and the government of Minister also. They must take note of it. And how, why it is happening with the Dalit people, why it is happening with the poor people, why it is happening with the backward people. It is a serious concern for everyone. So that's why I have told my, I have told my party men also right. to look into it very seriously. Dr. Paswan, Dr. Paswan, do you see? I mean, do you see this as a pattern of of trying to trying to trying to you know the dissent is being is being curtailed curtailment of the dissent which which happens you know the, these students were apparently were were seen as as dissenting against the against the hanging of Yakub Memon and some of the some of the other students had you know took took objection to it. But these are the, 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 there is there has to be dissent, and if if dissent is not allowed in universities, where else do you allow it? In democracy, everyone has a very right to express their dissent. Dissenting was must be there. It's the beauty of the democracy, and whosoever defies, whosoever decries such dissent, I condemn them. I condemn them, whether they are my part, party, anyone. I condemn them. In democracy. There is no escape for people containing such dissent. So really, if, we, if so that, 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 that one was told that he is anti-national, I really, I, I, I condemn. My, okay. Uh, 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 yes, I, I, I condemn such move of the, any minister, any member of parliament, any, any, uh, anyone. Who has okay. told me he was, he was traitor, he was anti-national. I totally, vehemently oppose it. I oppose it. So, so... But uh, sooner or later, my minister, Charity Smriti Rani, has uh, uh, taken note of it and she has given some statement. I welcome her statement. At this ministry uh, has taken some cognizance of this incident. Otherwise, Delhi, the students are dying, suiciding, nobody is caring. Okay. So let me thank, let me thank the minister from your um, TV okay. news. Okay. Uh, let me thank. But, okay. please, but she should go ahead of it. Right. Mr. Paswan, please stay on. I'll come back to you. You wanted to intervene. Yeah, I, I just wanted to say that it's very important to bring this into the discussion as to what was being condemned right. in the letter which uh, went from the ABVP to the ministers, etc. And, the and what was himself, written, and the minister, the minister himself you know, said calling the anti-national... Extremist, yes. anti-national, uh, casteist. Yes. You know, all kinds of appellations are being flung at these students. So where is there the space for dissent? Tell me. Exactly. If from the ruling establishment, your very legitimate non-violent protest is being dubbed in anti-national terms, where is the space for dissent? Nilab, Nilab, is, is, is this something new? Is this some, the question is, is this something new? We have, 
we have had this kind of problems you know for, for mm. quite some time now universities have become some kind of the autonomy of the universities have, have come have been curtailed dissent is being curtailed so you you see this as a trend which is happening you know dis regardless of which governments are in power or what is the problem the space for dissent is shrinking and it not just in uh, the educational arena but everywhere in the public space protests you know and the reaction is almost an over reaction hmm. for instance you have now expanded the security doctrine to include economic security now this can mean anything it's a Mm. general term hmm it can mean suppose two corporate houses have a rivalry you can book if you under uh, the kind of crony capitalism we see you can book the other house uh, as violating as mm. uh, threatening your economic security economic security of the company i'm not talking of activists i'm not talking of uday kumar mm. you know there of course in my opinion it's uncalled for and it's a stifling dissent it's stifling your right to protest now if you look at the university look at hyderabad in particular it's a, it's an ailment uh, which is it's like hyderabad university represents in microcosm the ailment which is threatening at the, the level the of the macrocosm system. the en entire system so you know there are four stages of it discrimination out of discrimination is born protest hmm dissent out of dissent comes action protest hmm and when that is sought stifled, to be curtailed sought to be curtailed so a systematic ailment is sort of instead of you administering a medicine a treatment for that ailment what you are doing it you are fanning it you are fanning stoking the ailment so you have closed outlet so hmm. then comes desperation so desperation if it starts taking uh, ends in people and young people taking their own lives i don't know where it will okay. end mm -hmm. professor torat professor torat you know apart from now yeah. we, we have understood what the problem is but you you were the chairman of the ugc how to what to what extent have been the the, the teaching community have been responsible for the state of affairs you know the student community you some people say you can't blame the student community the, the, so what what has been the role of the teaching teaching community in creating these kind of problems or or at least tackling these kind of problems no nigam yeah nigam the problem is fairly widespread uh, we are talking of hyderabad university today and the other, uh, other institute in hyderabad uh, there is a statistic brought out quite clearly that, that there were 14 uh, suicide by the dalit student Uh, between 2007 and 2013 in northern india in the city of uh, lucknow in the city of uh, rurki and uh, and delhi and in addition you had two more uh, uh, suicide in all india institute of medical science that's right and i chair one of the committees to look into the causes that's right i, I think i think the problem is fairly widespread uh, you know we don't have uh, we don't defend caste system constitution doesn't recognize caste system nobody defend caste system but the legacy and the hangover of uh, legacy and the remnants of the caste are reflected on the campuses through the behavior of the student high caste student high caste teacher and high caste administrator that is what the uh, some of these memorandum of the teachers which include high caste and low caste uh, indicate i think the issue is the following it's not the issue of teacher alone the issue is that the high higher education campuses has diversified during last 30 40 year in the early 90s uh, in the 19th century you had high caste brahmin male from urban area in the colleges now you have a brahmin you have a scheduled caste you have a tribe you have a muslim you have a girl from rural and urban area you have a diversity on the campus and all these student comes with their ideas and values which are exclusionary in nature groups are form on identities now i think this is not also an issue of india this is also an issue of usa in usa also the campuses are now diversified more diverse. you are black white latino asian american yeah so they have dealt it they have de introduced the courses to sensitize the student around the citizenship right and common right 
there is a common course in all the university of usa which has taught somewhere compulsory somewhere voluntary don't we have civic right education do, do, dr professor do thorat professor thorat don't we have we don't, that kind of sensitization we, we, programs we, we, in this university in our universities absolutely uh, you know let me tell you after the uh, very violent sexual incidents in jawala near university the vice chancellor has set up a committee and we are building up a course which will be almost compulsory for everybody which will talk about gender discrimination caste discrimination sexism ageism racism so we need to sensitize the student about the problem we uh, we must tell them to, we must teach them to learn to live with differences respect differences and be, and try to be a citizen we have okay. not taken this issue on the agenda at all okay. so we need to take that issue okay. on the agenda professor mukherjee now is this is this only about sensitization of the students or is it also sensitization of the teaching community the acad the, the administrative community of the universities i'd, I'd like to make a slightly different point on this issue as ne i have Nigam, seen my I, experience i am also saying of teach i am including teacher in that okay okay I, as i have seen in my experience in jnu for last more than 40 years you know generally there was a radical ideological climate and that would take care of handling lots of these right. issues outside classrooms in the sense you didn't have to have gender sensitization and caste sensitization courses because the prevalent the ideology both among students as well as among teachers was different what i am seeing is it's partly also a result of the death of ideology in our whole politics which we have been seeing for the last two or three decades the assertion now of identity based uh, uh, you know perceptions and politics and uh, the decline worldwide and certainly in india a retreat of that so some of it which would happen through normal processes of socialization in hostels in classrooms in our homes in public spaces there was always a process of radicalization that went so people when they came they changed their now, ideas in, in the change, they knew that they knew that these kind of ideas do not get any no, in the change in the changed environment the changed atmosphere now now yes where where you know identity <clears throat> is an issue identity is a reality Definitely. identity is a reality on the basis of which you know yeah. a lot of things happen so who, well, Nigam, who uh, on, Nigam, on, Nigam, on whom does, i would like to say something sir on one second and so on whom on whom does the owners lie to ensure that uh, you know everybody is on board on the issue i think on all of us i think it lies on the government of the day it lies on the university on faculty on students on all of us yes, but to be, we need as i said we need more institutional mechanisms including courses like professor thorat yes. has just pointed out which we've been working with i think on gender issue we have done much more but the, okay professor thorat no what i am saying is that the when i say diversified campus says the reason is that the student that those who come from small town and villages to the universities they come with their old ideas and right. old values right and 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 that and that that reflect in their in their behavior uh and there is no and the the in usa and elsewhere they have identified education institution as a channel whereby you can mold the uh, attitude of the student around citizenship right because 99% of the school children uh, children go to school and and a very high proportion go to colleges so educational institutions are the laboratory where you can build up the citizenship character of the Absolutely. of the of the student Absolutely. and of of course it of course it can be done out of course it can be done outside the campus but i think a very deliberate purpose you uh, teaching program of sensitization okay. is, is is necessary okay uh, and and also mr. giving the skill okay mr nalpat you know the, the, we are we are told that campuses have become very politicized you know he, he, professor mukherjee also was talking about how you know different political parties their student organizations get on get into the act and how the how the governments respond to it but the fact of the matter is politicization of politics in university is something which cannot be avoided well i'd like to say uh, girish that you're perfectly right politics has been there for a very long time i mean the radicalization uh, that was a movement was a lot of a lot of leaders today were all you know uh, the political let, let leaders let at me, university let level let when let they... me put it this way i have not seen a political party in power that does not want to help its student wing and which aggressively promotes its student wing at the expense of the other student wing i have not seen that 
to say that there's something different that is taking place now, which did not take place in the past, I think is not entirely correct. My point is, Giri, this is a function of the backwardness of this country. Now, you take, for example, rural and urban. The reality is that if you have a rural a space that is connected to, for example, the bandwidth, to the internet, and you have young children there going on Facebook or, or whatever, all these, you know, social uh, media, uh, doing chats across the world, their attitudes are going to be very similar, if I may say so, to the urban. This urban rural divide can be bridged by technology. And today, thank God, we got the mobile phones, we got mobile internet. So hopefully in about 10 years or 11 years time, there will be a much more significant bridging of the divide. In this, I just want to talk about those who are talking about so-called national security. Look, we are facing a huge threat from Maoist organizations. And let me tell you that if you do injustice to this most deprived section of society, you are actually assisting the growth of that kind of situation. You have to do full justice to them. And you have to make sure that it, you're not only doing justice, but you're perceived as doing justice. No, but the, but the, question, but the question today is, you know, the, the kind of, in, in, the, in this Hyderabad case, for instance, the kind of, the kind of role which the, which, which the, universe, the HRD ministry played, the, the minister from Hyderabad played, the union HRD minister played, these are things, how do you avoid these kind of things? You know, Girish, I'm very uh, unhappy uh, if you see, for example, let us say that any ministry, if the NSUI has a very big influence on MHRD during the time when the Congress mm. is in power, and the ABVP has a very high influence in the MHRD when the BJP is in power, is not helpful to the BJP, is not helpful to education, is not even helpful to the, uh, to the ABVP. I think it's very wrong for governments to interfere. The five letters is, in my view, whether it happened the Congress time or this time, it is unjustified and completely impermissible. Okay. There's no question about it. Okay, but very quickly, Nilab. So, do, do you see the onus now is, you know, is being, is being put on the student bodies for... You know, but where, where does the owner actually lie in, in ensuring that these things don't happen? Yeah, look, I'll tell you. I mean, we have all grown through sometimes and seen violent campuses. Right. You know, we have grown through conflicts. I was in Bihar when I entered university. It was, and the JP movement had just happened. And with me, my classmates were people who had already left two, three years of studies during the movement and they had come. It was also the hotbed of Maoist movement then. In Hyderabad, in the 80s, I remember there were fights between ABVP and uh, Maoist student organizations. Jadavpur University, we know, all of us know all that. Now here, the role of the administration, university administration, as well as, you know, the administration of the state or the country, the government of the day should be in such situations of conflict. And youth is a turbulent phase, we know. And part of the education, the whole education of life is political education, Absolutely. which they will have and they will try and experiment and see things for themselves. So there you have to have... Uh, and uh, the, the administration can't be partisan. Absolutely. It seems to be partisan. It has to be. It, it has, has to work yeah. towards resolving the conflict, providing Absolutely. legitimate constitutional outlets for Absolutely. grievances. You know? And okay. if you then clamp down on that and you are seen to be taking sides, then of course, then. Okay, I, don't I, think, know who I, 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 I think I think on that note we need to end. But the fact is that autonomy, autonomy for universities and allowing dissent of the students or, you know, student bodies is very essential to ensure that, you know, we, do, we don't get into the kind of situations which we are witnessing now. Hopefully, all the authorities concerned will take note of it. Thanks to all my guests. Please keep watching. We'll come back with another issue in the big picture same time tomorrow.